All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Eric, for the invitation to speak today. Uh, today we're talking about uh, some new uh, recent advances for the collective coordinate model reduction approach, which is for uh, networks with coupled oscillators. In particular, looking at a, a new ansatz that accurately describes both uh, finite networks and the thermodynamic limit. So first of all, uh, briefly introduce the Kuramoto model. So we have uh, N oscillators with phase phi, they each have a natural frequency omega, and we have sinusoidal coupling between oscillators and a coupling strength K. Uh, one way to uh, sort of describe the macroscopic state of the system is the complex order parameter. So R e to the i psi is the mean position of uh, all oscillators in the complex plane. So if you have a, a low coupling strength, then the oscillators will generally be kind of like randomly dispersed in the circle. So R will be order one on the square root of N. Whereas if you have a high coupling strength, then the oscillators will synchronize and you'll have R close to one. This R is time dependent and we can get a uh, constant value by looking at the time average, which is this R bar. Now, uh, model reduction, the aim of model reduction is to reduce the dynamics to a small number of active degrees of freedom uh, for the Kuramoto model, there's been uh, a couple of well-known methods. First of all, there's the ott antonsen ansatz which has basically been the go-to method for the last uh, decade. However, it assumes that there are infinitely many oscillators and so cannot describe finite size effects. Uh, an alternative method is the watana based rogatz approach, which does work for finite populations, but it assumes that all natural frequencies are identical. So the question is, what about finite populations of non-identical oscillators? That's where the collective coordinate approach can come in. So uh, the, to describe the collective coordinate approach, we have, uh, we make some uh, ansatz about uh, how the oscillators will behave. So in this case, we're going to say that the phases are, have some uh, shape function and then a single degree of freedom, which is this alpha, which is going to be time dependent. So what we're doing is we are uh, basically restricting the dynamics to a one dimensional manifold in Rn. And we want to get the dynamics of alpha. So to do that, we look at error that is encoded by this approximation. So uh, this, uh, the red is the time derivative of our uh, ansatz. And then we subtract away the green, which is the full model. And that gives us our error vector. So here, this uh, the dynamics alpha dot basically controls the, the length of this red vector. And as you can tell, that's going to also control the size of the error. That error is going to be minimized uh, if and only if it is orthogonal to uh, the tangent space spanned by d phi hat d alpha. So this orthogonality condition gives us the uh, dynamics of alpha. One thing I want to notice is that uh, here we are summing over only the set C, so that's in both these cases. That set C is the set of synchronized oscillators, which for now we're going to say we know a priori. Um, but later on, I'll tell you how we can find that set C through the collective coordinate approach. And in this collective coordinate uh, description, synchronization is equivalent to there being a stable stationary point of our dynamics. So in this picture, the dynamics are shown by these arrows and here is the stable stationary point uh, phi hat of alpha star. And we hope at least that this is going to uh, be close to the true asymptotic state of the system, which here is shown as phi star. So this uh, uh, equation looks very uh, complicated, but Really, it is just a, a one-dimensional OEE. And uh, looking at how uh, it changes with K, we're increasing K as we go down here. So uh, what we see is that there is this minimum value. And as you increase K, that minimum eventually crosses the uh, vertical X, or, yeah, the axis, which uh, results in a sudden node bifurcation and the birth of a stable point and an unstable point. And this stable point is the 
what's going to give this stable, uh, the synchronized solution. And this uh, Saturnoid bifurcation is going to be important later on as well. So you know, how should we choose the shape function for our ansatz? So looking at the Kuramoto model, we can put it in uh, this mean field form, putting R and Psi in the mean field parameters. And now synchronization is uh, equivalent to all oscillators rotating together on the circle. And going into a rotating reference frame, you can say that that is equivalent to all oscillators being stationary on the circle. So using that condition, we can put that into this equation and solve for phi i, where we can similarly say that uh, psi is zero through another change of coordinates as well, which gives this uh, solution. And then um, doing a Taylor, experience, Taylor expansion around large k, we get uh, this uh, power series. And this motivates what we call the linear collective coordinate ansatz, where this phi hat is uh, a linear multiple of the natural frequency. And this was the ansatz originally used uh, by my supervisor Georg and uh, has been used in some other papers. And looking at how this uh, ansatz reproduces the order parameter r bar as a function of k, we see that it does uh, a very good job of reproducing transition from incoherence through partial synchronization to eventually global synchronization at high k. Uh, but even though there's good agreement, there's still a few questions. So like, first of all, why does it work? And, and by that, I mean, what is the physical meaning or physical significance of the collective coordinate and its dynamics? Two, can it be improved? And can this uh, collective coordinate method be connected to existing methods like the arc sine ansatz, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, like the odd Anderson ansatz and self-consistency approaches. And to answer those questions, uh, we introduced uh, this new ansatz, which is to say, uh, we're not doing this uh, linearization, we're taking the full nonlinear function as our ansatz. And in this case, the uh, collective coordinate alpha is the same as the order parameters, so that kind of gives a, a physical meaning behind it. And we also find that uh, making this ansatz, we get uh, a much better approximation of the dynamics of, of the order parameter. And later on, I'll show you that we can, using this ansatz, we can uh, connect with uh, the odd Anderson ansatz and other, other theories. Now, I'm just going to do more comparison with the between the two answers, the linear and the arc sign. So we're looking at uh, a Lorentzian natural frequency distribution. And for now, I'm going to look at an equiprobable draw of frequencies. So this minimizes finite size effects. Uh, yeah, so in this top picture, I've got uh, the R bar as a function of K for uh, 50, 500, and inf infinitely many oscillators. Um, and in this bottom two, I'm showing the errors. So green basically quantifies finite size effects. It's the difference between the finite case and the infinite case. And then the error in the linear and arc sign ancestors. So uh, what we see is that uh, for n equals 50, both collective coordinate ancestors do uh, a very good job of capturing the finite size effects. Going up to n equals 500, uh, the arc sine ansatz still does a very good job, but the linear ansatz now kind of does a, a worse job than uh, the thermodynamic limit approximation. So we can say that the arc sine ansatz does uh, a good job of capturing finite size effects. And uh, that becomes even more clear when we look at a, a fully random draw of the natural frequency, so just a single realization. So by doing this, we exacerbate uh, finite size effects. And you can see that in the R bar as a function of K curve, where instead of having uh, like a, a nice concave down curve, like the thermodynamic limit, now we have concave down, concave up, concave down. 
and uh, that is that uh, uh, behavior is very well captured by the arc sine ansatz, but is of course not captured at all by the thermodynamic limit. And again, looking at the errors, we see a similar behavior to before, where the arc sine ansatz is uh, significantly better. So next, I want to talk about how the collective coordinates uh, captures the synchronized cluster and how we can get the cluster from collective coordinates. So first of all, uh, in the full Kuramoto model, the synchronized cluster C, we can identify by looking for uh, oscillators with identical uh, effective frequencies. That's where we uh, time average the velocity of each oscillator. And in the collective coordinate framework, we can uh, find C as the maximal set of oscillators such that our dynamics has a stable stationary solution. So remember that's where it comes in in this sum. So yeah, so we're maximizing the set C such that this equation has such a solution. And just seeing how well uh, the different approaches uh, capture the, the set C, here we're showing the extent of C uh, as a function of K. So the oscillators, the oscillator index is the vertical axis and oscillators are ordered in terms of natural frequency. So basically everything between these two curves forms a synchronized cluster. So you've got black is the full Kuramoto model and then the linear and arc sine ansatzes. So we see that the arc sine ansatz does uh, a very good job of capturing the size of the synchronous cluster, whereas the linear ansatz tends to over predict the size. Now I said that we can also find the cluster from uh, the from the collective coordinates and to do that, we look at, uh, it comes uh, through the sudden, this idea of sudden node bifurcation. So for a given set C, uh, there exists, we know there exists this uh, critical coupling strength K where there is a sudden node bifurcation in the collective coordinate dynamics. So if we start from uh, a high coupling strength uh, and progressively decrease until we, we hit this uh, solenoid point and we want to go slightly less than that, we want to go to k slightly less than ksn, we know that we need, we need to remove nodes from the, uh, from the set. And if we've got all to all coupling, we know that we just need to remove nodes with uh, natural frequencies furthest from the mean. So to see how that uh, looks, so starting from here, in this top branch, we have the n equals 50, and the colored curves are the uh, stable stationary, uh, the branches of stable stationary solutions. So here we have the, the branch for 36 uh, oscillators, and we decrease k and we eventually hit this subtle node bifurcation. We know that we need to remove oscillators, and uh, in this case, there is the oscillators have uh, perfectly symmetric natural frequency, so we need to remove uh, a pair of them. So that's why we jump from 36 down to 34, continue along that branch, we hit another sudden node, and we jump down to 32 oscillators. So if you keep doing this, you gradually remove more and more oscillators from your set C. And uh, uh, so one other thing I want to point out is that this dashed line is the R bar curve for the full Kuramoto model. So we see that we get uh, a very good, uh, uh, very accurately captures that curve. In particular, the uh, non smoothness of it. And that's especially the case near to each set of node bifurcation. Uh, so, what this tells us is also is that the transition from global synchronization to partial synchronization and then incoherence occurs in the collective coordinate description as this cascade of subtle node bifurcations. And going to a higher value of n, uh, which is this lower curve, the looks uh, smoother in the sense that the, the jumps are less pronounced and the subtle node bifurcations are closer together. 
Now, uh, when we look at the thermodynamic limit, so we're taking n to infinity. So this was our equation for finite n. Taking n to infinity, uh, the sums become integrals. So we get this uh, new equation where we have uh, three integrals, i1, i2, and i3. And for the arcsine and sats, where our collective coordinate is the same as our order parameter, we can uh, reduce it into uh, this form. So uh, if, we're looking for, if we're looking for the stationary states, j1 is strictly positive. So the, uh, we always have r equals zero. And all synchronized states must satisfy k2 for r and k equals one. So this uh, condition is a well-known relation between r and k. It was uh, originally uh, found by Kuramoto using a self-consistency approach and can also be derived from the Ott antecedent ansatz uh, as shown by Omochenko and Fulfram. So one thing that uh, is not captured by the Ott antecedent ansatz is that we also have this I3 term and that I3 actually diverges, it goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. What I'll argue today is that this is due to critical slowing down associated with that cascade of sudden node bifurcations. So uh, looking at a Lorentzian frequency distribution, our uh, equation can be simplified into this form. The right-hand side is exactly the same as what you'd get from the Ott Anderson ansatz. So that means that we get the exact same pitchfork bifurcation structure with the same uh, stationary state. However, we also have this uh, one and epsilon term at the front. Uh, so that epsilon is this D over I3. D is uh, just uh, some complicated finite value, whereas I3 goes to infinity, so epsilon goes to zero. So where does this uh, epsilon going to zero come from? So I showed you before that for finite cases, we have this uh, cascade of sudden node bifurcations. And uh, as we increase n, those sudden node bifurcations get closer and closer together on this k-axis. And in the limit n goes to infinity, we're going to have a, a sudden node bifurcation at every value of the coupling string. Uh, and that leads to uh, critical slowing down at every value of k. Uh, another way to analyze this is to, uh, again, look at, at our uh, 1D manifold ansatz description, where here we have the stable stationary solution. And what we're going to look at is uh, a small perturbation uh, away from that state uh, along the ansatz manifold and the dynamics uh, of how this relaxes back to the, the uh, stationary state. So our perturbation delta R uh, has uh, this linearized dynamics where relaxation rate lambda is given by this. So the only problematic thing here is I3, which this is the definition of I3. And the problem with I3, why it goes to infinity is that the integration limits are KR and minus KR if you have any smaller integration window than I3 is finite. So we wanna look at how uh, I3 goes to infinity as that integration window approaches that minus KR KR. So we're gonna look at this I3 tilde of delta where we have uh, just this delta term. And uh, we, can uh, we can expand this and we find that uh, it scales like minus log delta. So clearly, as delta goes to zero, this is going to blow up and go to infinity. So we can plot uh, lambda as a function of minus log delta. So delta goes to zero is going to the right here. And uh, yes, yeah, so we see that lambda goes to zero as delta goes to zero. And we can actually do uh, a similar procedure, this kind of uh, looking at this relaxation rate lambda, we can do that for finite cases. Finite. And 
when we do that, what we find is that uh, we get very good agreement in the limit between the finite cases in the limit as delta goes to zero and n becomes very large. So what this tells us is that um, this epsilon factor, it is telling us something uh, real about the system um, for the limit of finite cases going to infinity. And that's this critical slowing down phenomenon. So uh, to summarize, the arctine analysis that describes finite size effects. It also recovers well-known results in the thermodynamic limit. The collective coordinate method as a whole yields dynamics of the order parameter. So that means that it can also be uh, generalized to non-stationary asymptotic states. For instance, if we've got uh, multiple interacting clusters and we want to look at their dynamics, the uh, collective coordinate method can also be generalized to the Kuramoto Sakaguchi model, which includes, includes a phase frustration parameter. Uh, and that's in this uh, recent paper of ours. Uh, and in that paper, we again look at uh, a linear and an arcsine type ansatz. And while the arcsine ansatz is better, what is probably uh, more interesting is that having an ansatz for the uh, non-entrained oscillators, so those that don't synchronize, is probably the most important part of that. And uh, yeah, so if you'd like to, uh, more information on what I've spoken today, uh, our paper is very almost published. So thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, Lachlan. This was a very interesting talk. There's now time for questions. Please freeze them in the Q&A button. There's nothing as of now. I'll just wait a moment. So, well, maybe I can ask a question meanwhile, Lachlan. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you say using your method regarding the uh, odd antons and manifold? Is there something you can see there that you can um, relate to? I mean, we recover the same bifurcation structure as the odd Anderson approach. Uh, you mean, can you, uh, can you kind of... Can you recover all the stuff, all the dynamics that you can see that method? Uh, yes, I mean, like I showed you that uh, yeah. essentially the same, in the thermodynamic limit, we get essentially the same uh, dynamics as the odd Anderson approach, except that uh, epsilon factor of the front. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's switch to, uh, there's a question by Benjamin Jutner, i switch to live. Um. Hello? That doesn't, let me do this again. Okay. I can read out the question if you would like. Okay. Yeah, that's maybe easier. Okay, so the uh, question is which, uh, okay, uh, the question is which finite size effects in particular does capture? Um, so it captures the kind of, it's just capturing the, uh, the, the macroscopic dynamics when you have a finite population, which is something that uh, other methods, to my knowledge, can't do. Um, uh, you can also, so it's not, I haven't shown it here, but uh, like, uh, uh, one of the other Gail Gottwald's papers uh, shows that um, when you have a stochastic Kuramoto model, you can capture the stochastic drift of the, uh, of the dynamics, which you, is truly a finite size effect and you, is, yeah, only happens in the finite case. And you can also get yeah, so the collective coordinate method can do that kind of thing as well. Okay, I hope this answered Benjamin's question. Um, thank you. Then there's a question by Horatio Rothstein. I'll try to switch to live. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Um, maybe it works this time. It's a bit, uh, maybe now. Horatio? Yes. Can you hear me? This works. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's Horatio actually. Um, no, but my question is how to how do you extend or apply? I mean, uh, let's say extend this theory to networks that make use of more dynamics than than just phase, where uh, there's some transient effects that go at the. Uh, I mean, if it's neurons voltages that are away from 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 an existing limit cycle. Uh, someone asked a question before, uh, can we apply this to reduce the analysis uh, in deep brain stimulation and based on ganglia network? And this type of networks, uh, for example, will make use of, uh, of other type of dynamics uh, beyond phase. Yeah, I mean, that's a really great question. Um, something that we're still kind of looking at at the moment. We've mostly been focusing on like the, the Kuromoto model and Kuromoto Sakaguchi because they're the simplest. Um, I think that for other types of models, uh, a similar type of approach could be used. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to say without looking at the specific model, like what you would have to do, but um, yeah, so Perhaps you could come up with a, a, a good ansatz manifold through uh, linearization of the dynamics, which is kind of how you get, how you can derive the linear. Um, so so uh, I don't know the, the complete answer to that question, but it's something to look into in the future. Is, yeah, definitely generalizing this to more complex uh, models. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any further questions for Lata? Okay, there's no further questions, it seems. So thanks again, Lata. I'll do the collective clapping for you. Doesn't sound as loud, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, we can imagine. So thanks again. Thank you. Our Next speaker.